My name is Evan Stevens. I'm an IFMGA mountain guide. I'm also the owner and lead guide of Valhalla Mountain Touring, a backcountry ski lodge located here in the Selkirks of British Columbia. I also work with outdoor research and product development and testing and creation of new gear. Before I go out for a day of backcountry ski touring, uh, religiously I'm on the World Wide Web going to resources such as the Canadian Avalanche Association and the U.S. Forest Service Avalanche Centers, getting my snowpack information, weather, recent avalanche activity. Typically on a day out touring, I'll go through a progression of quick pits that I dig with my hand to a full bone test profile pit. A lot of times when I am searching out these persistent weak layers, like a buried surface hoar layer, I can go through and just see if that layer exists really quickly with my hand by digging a quick pit to get down to the known depth where this layer is buried. It's a really quick visual and hand hardness identification of whether or not that layer exists. I can do that 10, 15, 20 times throughout my day and it's only going to take about six or seven minutes of my total time out touring. It's time to dig when, you're, when you really want to know how consolidated a soft slab might be on top of this buried weak layer. The primary thing I want to do when I'm selecting a spot to dig a snow pit is uh, that it's representative of locations where I'm going to be ski touring and at the same time, it's not gonna compromise my safety. I'm gonna cut through my snow as straight, clean and consistent as I can. Um, and so in my snow stability tests, the main ones I like to perform is the compression test because it is kind of the quickest. Um, I can repeat it two to three times quite easily so I can see if my results are consistent. So the first thing I'm doing here is I gotta be able to isolate my column of snow on all three sides. And I'm gonna cut through, and I'm gonna look to make sure my saw is going all the way through my block. And finally, I'm gonna do some compression tests. So it starts with placing my shovel blade flat on the surface. I remove lots of the unconsolidated surface snow. Give myself a level surface here. And I'm gonna start with a series of taps, and it starts with 10 taps from the wrist, okay. The next part after the 10 from the wrist is the 10 from my elbow. So same thing, so one, two, three, four, five. And so on five, I had a little bit of a failure. I could see my surface hoar layer collapse. The block didn't move much, but I can take it off. And it is a bit of a more consistent piece of snow. And when I look and I take out what was on here, I can really see some of those flat, planar grains. After that, I'll kind of remove the column I made. I can see it's really, really strong. There might be some other layers that break in here, but that's after a full round of compression tests and some beaten up. And so I just like to make sure my results are repeatable, that I didn't see some fluke in a little piece of snow. So I'll do the same thing again. The information is, has to be as quantifiable as possible. You want this to be the same results and information that you're gonna record as any one of your ski partners might. And that's part of the homogenization, I'd say, of avalanche training and skills. And that's the benefit of, of going to courses and getting certified or trained by uh, knowledgeable professionals, because then we're all on the same page and talking the same language. 